Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Don Jacobson. I'm the Chief Judge of the Tenth Judicial Circuit, and I do want to welcome you all here for this Veterans Day celebration. The very first thing I'd like us all to do is stand and uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, You all may be seated. I wanted to start today with that for two reasons. One, I think it's one of the most important things we as citizens can do. And secondly, uh, we all say those words regularly and sometimes don't fully appreciate what they stand for. The last phrase, with liberty and justice for all. The reason why I think that's important is how appropriate it is to have this celebration here at a local courthouse. You know, the local courthouse is a bulwark of liberty and justice for all. Uh, I don't think there's a better venue for us than this local courthouse that sits really as a symbol of freedom and a symbol of liberty and of justice. Men and women, women have served this great country and others are doing so right now, uh, fighting for democracy, for liberty, and for justice. Our court system is the envy of the world, and it is one of the real cornerstones of our democracy. So when we say the Pledge of Allegiance and end with, with liberty and justice for all, I want you to appreciate how important it is that uh, we are here in a courthouse being able to uh, thank you, uh, all of you that have served, uh, all of you for your service, for your sacrifice in serving this great country. And I want to thank all the others that are present for coming here and helping us honor the veterans within our court system, within court administration, uh, in celebrating this Veterans Day celebration. So I do applaud all of you for being here, and especially those that are actual former service members. We do have one uh, dignitary I'd like to uh, point out. We have Commissioner Ed Smith with us. Mr. Smith, if you'd stand, he's present to help us for today's festivities. And with that, I am going to uh, turn the matter over first to Mr. Daniel Penzian and to John Weems, the vice president and vice president of the Vietnam Veterans of America uh, which is number 1040 in their presentation. Thanks everyone for coming today. My name is John Weems. I am currently Vice President of the Vietnam Veterans of America, past Commander of America Legion, and have been with the mentoring program since its inception when we started working on this about two and a half years ago with a good Judge Green. Um, this is Dan Penzen. Dan is the President of the Vietnam Veterans of America, and uh, we're all Army veterans. I'd like to introduce the rest Phil Marlett, U.S. Army veteran. He's a finance officer for the Vietnam Veterans of America. Fran Perro. Fran's the one lady that's associated with us. She was an MP in the Army. And Fran is the chaplain for American Legion Post 8. And finally, Mike Casty, who is the chef de gare, which is the same as commander of the 40 and 8 Honor Society. That's a society of veterans who've done honorable service to other veterans. We're here because of the Veterans Court. I got a couple of comments to make and then we'll get on with it. 81% of the justices involved, or the veterans involved, have substance abuse problems prior to incarceration, and 25% were identified as mentally ill. 33% of all the justice involved veterans were homeless at some point. Veteran treatment courts stabilize veterans 
and ensure that they're able to return to honor and lead productive lives. In addition, the veteran treatment courts are effective stop gaps for preventing future homelessness, reuniting veterans with their families, and putting veterans back to school and back to work. For those that don't know how the Veterans Court works, if you ever have a chance, come down and sit in Judge Williams' uh, courtroom on Wednesdays. We're usually there as mentors every Wednesday. He puts us first on the docket, gets us in and gets us out. But it's working very well, and uh, we're going to see good progress. I just was talking to Judge Green earlier today. Our chapter we have in uh, the longest one we have in Florida right now is down in West Palm Beach, which started five years ago. In, uh, they just celebrated their fifth anniversary, and they proved to the, the government and to the city and everything else that they can save millions of dollars by what we do with the Veterans Court. It's keeping, keeping people out of jail. So we appreciate all that th this staff does up here. And uh, as mentors, I speak on every, everybody's behalf, and we hope the uh, Veterans Court continues to do so, and we keep progressing, get more and more mentees in the system and, and get their lives straightened out and get them back on the street. It's a hand up, not a hand out. Thank you, everyone. Just a quick note before we leave. The first Veterans Court was 2008, Buffalo, New York, started by a Vietnam Veterans of America chapter. Good day. It is my great pleasure to introduce our next uh, speaker who really needs no introduction. I mean, you just look over on the wall and see where we are, and, and that is that wall, Oliver. <laughs> and that is uh, one of our dear judges, and that's Judge Oliver Green. We weren't given a great deal of time for these presentations. And I thought I would give you a synopsis of what uh, the service meant for me, and I believe uh, it means the same to a great many other people. And I just cherish the opportunity of uh, being able to share this with you. I've had two professions in my life. As a retired uh, military person, I'm still uh, considered uh, semi-military, and then, of course, as an attorney. And uh, my intention in high school was to go into service, uh, attain a college degree, and make the service my career. I went into service in June of 1950, early June, and uh, when I learned that my training was going to be at Fort Knox, Kentucky. I wasn't at all concerned about the training regimen. My interest was in seeing the gold. I'm being just as honest as I can with you. Back then, we had uh, encyclopedias. Uh, now you have Google, but uh, uh, I had read about the gold and, and uh, just uh, wanted to ask everyone uh, about uh, having seen the goal. Got to Fort Knox, and uh, I don't have to tell you that I didn't see the goal, but I, uh, I was delivered to a barracks and told to report inside, went inside, and saw one of the most beautiful men that I have ever encountered, um, our drill instructor. We had two. And he was uh, showing how to make beds and foot lockers and hang clothes. And he took a quarter and he held it over the bed and he flipped it in the air. That quarter hit the blanket, bounced right back in his hand. I must have tried that a hundred, a hundred times. Uh, my point is that uh, one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had one of the most wonderful relationships I've ever had was with drill instructors. Now, those of you who've been in service know that griping is part of a soldier's right. But, uh, so help me, I never heard a soldier gripe about their drill, in dr uh, drill instructor, and I credit my instructors with saving my life 
for later in June, as you may recall, the North Koreans uh, invaded South Korea and uh, training took uh, uh, on more, more meaning. In any event, uh, uh, I did uh, go to Korea and uh, as best I can tell, had my 18th birthday in North Korea around uh, Chosan Reservoir. And uh, incidentally, uh, I was at a location not far from where the uh, uh, North Korean atomic uh, facilities are at this time in those mountains. We were west of uh, the reservoir. And uh, as it turned out, I ended up with two battle stars, one for the North Korean campaign. And then we went back south and headed north towards uh, the Han River, which is located near Seoul. And it was at that location on February 14th, uh, 1951, that uh, I was talking to a platoon lieutenant, rifle company platoon lieutenant, uh, about where we, I was a machine gunner in D Company, uh, where we were going to place our, our guns and an artillery shell, a short round, 105, hit between us. And that's what uh, exited me from Korea. And then, of course, I was in uh, military hospitals for uh, 20 months and 21 days and had 11 surgeries and, and uh, dealt with the VA. And uh, I want to tell you, take this opportunity to mention that the VA service office in Bartow over the years has just been wonderful. Uh, and uh, for me, the VA has been wonderful. Um, I want to tell you that uh, well, uh, with all of the things that happened, uh, uh, I took more from the service than I gave. Beyond any question, I think the, the training that I had, the experiences that I had uh, from one start to two finishes, actually, a little story there, but uh, in any event, uh, uh, didn't nearly parallel what I received from the service that hopefully made me into the person I am. I uh, have told this story before. Um, Jay Barry wrote Peter Pan, the little boy that wouldn't grow up. And uh, he said that roses are the roses in November are the product of your God-given memory. And I think what he was trying to say is that those negatives in life that pull you down should be left behind and uh, concentrate on the roses that uh, you can still see in December because you have that God-given memory. Thank you. Next, introduce to you uh, our judge that is in charge of the uh, Veterans Court, and that is Judge Bobby Williams. Look out when you hand a lawyer one of these and a microphone, because you could be here a while. <laughs> Not really. It's going to be short. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is just to um, thank all of those that are here as well. Um, you're honoring those folks that have served our country faithfully and with honor. Um, and I, to make this a priority of your day uh, is significant in my mind because we are here to honor our veterans and those that have served our military. Um, I might just ask at this point, if you have served in the military or a veteran, if you could just lift your hand. I just want to see who in the room. Mm, look at the number. Wow. Uh, I guess the way I would say it is thank you for your service. 
Um, I was not fortunate enough to ever be involved as a veteran or involved in the military. I had a father who served in Korea, and now it means more than, to me than anything else has ever meant in that regard, and that is because I have a son um, that is serving in the Air Force. Some of the folks that are in my courtroom get to hear that tale from time to time. I kind of brag on him from time to time, but um, we're really proud. Uh, he's about to begin training um, out in Wichita Falls, Texas uh, to fly uh, jets, and we're thrilled about that because it's a lifelong uh, dream that he's had. It really is a privilege to preside in the veterans uh, docket, the court um, that we have established here. Um, wow, some great people that I have the, the honor to serve with. I just want to, um, you've heard some of the folks already, but if you're a part of our um, system there in the veterans docket, just lift your hand for a moment again. The mentors and others, good. Um, those folks are working diligently and faithfully um, to help us do what we do um, each week. Um, they're involved in areas of service that we don't even know sometimes. I hear things that they, they have done to help some of our folks, and it's, um, it's quite impressive to say the least. Um, they're acting as a sounding board or a listening ear for uh, those folks that are participating, um, and that's critical. Um, they're doing things, simple things like providing transportation when it's necessary and uh, certain other little things that they do. Uh, the needs that are there, they, they simply just stand in the gap and make it happen. And so I'm grateful for that too. Um, they're there faithfully each Wednesday, uh, along with our Veterans Justice Outreach Officer, who you've met already, Ms. Whitford, who comes, as I like to say, from miles and miles away to be involved. She lives in the North Tampa area, and we uh, are just uh, very grateful for her participation. I said last week that when she walks the halls of the VA in Tampa, um, it's like E.F. Hutton, people listen. Um, and so she has been a great advocate for our participants that are involved in the system. Um, and so I give my thanks to all of you for the help that you've provided. I also want to acknowledge, uh, he's not here this afternoon, but Mike Mason has been with us from the very beginning. I remember sitting down in his office with Ann Weeks and talking about uh, the whole process, and Mike was all in, um, and he'll always be all in. Uh, Mike works for the Polk County Veterans Services folks for Polk County, um, and he's um, provided so much um, involved in the planning process, involved in helping us create it, um, and as well doing many other things unseen as well. Uh, we have been fortunate, to, if you've been in courtroom 6A, to have some of those um, military flags adorn our courtroom. And if you haven't been in there, you should go in uh, because it's impressive. It's very significant. I think John Weems spent more time making sure that those flags were exactly the right space apart, one from another, uh, than anything else. But I'm appreciative uh, for that. And so this is a great day of honor for you, uh, our veterans, and I just want to make sure that you understand uh, how much we appreciate what you've done. Uh, and for those that have been a part of our system, thank you as well. Um, and for those that have been here just to be here because you're grateful too, thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to close with uh, no magical words um, other than to say that our court administration folks, as usual, have um, provided, uh, you know, beautiful decorations and maybe a little bit of cake and uh, other things for you. We'd love it if you stayed uh, along for a little bit and visited. Um, and so with those words, I'll bring this to a close with thanks. Um, be uh, willing to stay around and converse if you'd like. And again, we appreciate your presence. Thank you.